So this was a story that I found over the weekend, and I found it to be very, very interesting. Nothing to do with Bitcoin on paper, but bear with me now. The Reserve Bank of Australia has hired an independent research team to determine how much their central banks played a role in the ongoing recession. This is significant because Australia was just doing exactly what the US Fed and the ECB were doing. This report will be more than a reflection on Australia, but rather the entire central banking policies over the last two years. Uh, Mind you, this independent inquiry will be done by two Australian economists plus an ex-deputy governor of the Bank of Canada, who is currently an external member to the Financial Policy Committee of the Bank of England. Um, Look, this is a lot of bankers are going to be paying close attention to this because this could be the first sign that... The bankers are actually at fault with what we're seeing and dealing with, despite their rhetoric. Uh, Another very interesting thing out of Australia was the fact that their governor, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia's governor, Philip Lowe, said that their team's forecasting was, quote, embarrassing. We should have forecast this better. We didn't, end quote. Uh, I've been calling for a lot of accountability from the central bankers, and it looks like this could be the first iteration of that remains to be seen as this is a developing story. Uh, I don't think they're going to find fault with themselves. I think they're going to blame Putin. I think they're going to blame sanctions. I think they're going to blame coronavirus. This is like, it's like, I find audits so funny when you pay a company to come and like check your books. Like if you're like tear them apart, like tr- like my old job, t- two jobs ago, I used to be in compliance. And it's like, it, yeah, you hire the auditor and like, yeah, they're like tough, but it's kind of like a tough love. It's like, hey, man, you really need to improve this. But like, we're still going to give you a B plus. Like, you know, it's just like, it's still a good grade, a B plus. It's not excellent, but it's like, they're not going to hate you with like everything they got because then you're never going to hire them again. Like you need, like these audits are meant for companies to make like themselves look good. So at the end of the day, they're going to be like, hey guys, maybe you printed a little bit of money, but really it's not your fault. It's Corona, it's Putin, it's X, Y, and Z thing. Uh, I don't know. Th- that's just what I think is going to be. Pete, you want to chime in here? Nailed it. There's there's really two outcomes here. And I, I, can, I agree with everything you just said. Uh, <laughs> I was on the like software engineering side of that. So uh, with audits, they go exactly as you specified. Uh, you are paying the person to come to a conclusion that supports your interests. So when you're doing audits where you're actually trying to improve things, they'll be harsher. And when you're doing audits, they're going to be released publicly. They're way, way easier. So there's two things that are happening here. One is the... Reserve Bank of Australia is like, we fucked up so badly that we have to, that, like shit that we don't even know about yet, that they're like, we have to basically have a smoke screen of doing due diligence, right? And then later it's going to come out or there's going to be some weird, uh, you know, like way that that plays out. Or number two is they are going to use this as a way to shift blame onto either other central banks or they're going to come to a conclusion that's like, as you said, it's going to be like, we didn't do anything wrong or we did the best we could and that's going to make them look better. So I think regardless, it will be an interesting outcome, but I, I do not see a world where they come to the conclusion like, yeah, we fucked everything up. Like they're already sort of like smearing the blame. It sounds like where they're basically saying like, it's all central banks. It's not just us. Like, don't be angry. Well, so to, to, to clarify, no one has come out to draw that conclusion other than myself, the Financial Times, and Stockwitz Daily Report, which I originally read this story oh, from. Just the Financial Times? Just the Financial Times. So Australia itself has not come out to say that, but I think the second point that you made, P, is far more likely here, where rather than you have two Australians and a Canadian slash Brit on this inquiry committee, so no, you have two out of three people who are Australian already on the committee, it's going to be fully biased. I agree with that sentiment. I do, however, think this is the smoke screen to start pointing the finger at other central bankers and say, hey, we just did what you guys told us to do. This is exactly what happened to Sri Lanka. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. IMF, they did everything that they were told to do. And then lo and behold, they actually couldn't handle that. So you guys are both right. The inquiry is going to be way too biased, but it will be interesting if it still comes out and points the finger at ECBs or at the ECB or at the Fed. Because now it's starting to say, hey, like you guys are having a far greater impact your decisions do on the entire global economy, more so than you realize, even though you guys are literally entrusted with the entire global fucking economy, but no one seems to know how to run it. Q, I I think you're right. I think they might point at other ones, but it's kind of one of those things that like 
they're also their friends or partners that when they're looking for money, who do they go to? The ECB or the Federal Reserve uh, outside of the IMF. So they might be like, they're going to like disguise it in language that like, due to the strengthening conditions of the do- of the US dollar, like that's what caused like these, like without saying they printed too much money, they're going to say the US dollar strengthened too much relative to the global economy is what I think. It's like let, a nice let, way of saying like, you guys screwed us, but not saying like the US screwed us, if that makes sense. Let me, let me pose this question and then we'll move on to the next story. But if the report actually says, hey, the policies of the ECB, the policies of the Federal Reserve really hampered us and they were the root cause of all of this. Do you think Australia maybe does the courtesy of giving Jerome Powell or Christine Lagarde a quick phone call to say, hey, our research shows this, it gets published tomorrow, goodbye? Or do they just bury it? What What does that dynamic look like? 100% uh, they give them a heads up, I think. I, I mean, look, like everybody knows what's actually going on here. Like if they were like, hey, we've done... Uh, a couple million dollars worth of research and we have found Jerome Powell's going to be like, why the fuck did you spend a couple million dollars? We all know what happened here. We all know why this actually happened. Like you should have saved that fucking money and done whatever you're going to do anyway. So like they already know what's going on. I think you are right though, that they are probably going to give people a heads up, but I have no, none of us have any idea how those channels specifically work, but none of these things happen in isolation, right? To your point earlier, Q, like all of these central banks are deeply incestuously involved with each other. The idea that these countries can basically uh, maintain their own like economic sovereignty is hilarious, right? Like, like that, that is a, a fiction that none of us on the show believe. And most people I think who listen to this don't believe, but that's a fiction that is, uh, you know, basically propagated by all these central banks that everyone has a deeply vested interest in continuing to promote. But the reality is our, all of our, all of our economies are so intertangled at this point that we're all just kind of, we're all, uh, you know, marching to the same tune. And right now, a significant aspect of that tune is, uh, you know, decided by the ECB and also by, you know, the United States Federal Reserve, but we're all in the same boat together. 